Hey everyone, my name is Brian. I'm currently in self-isolation with my cat here. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to do a poof teleport effect that you might have seen in my dance videos, like this one here. It's a really easy effect. You won't need any other plugins. Just follow these step by step and you'll be able to tweak it a little bit and, um, and get it down. So how you're going to do this effect is put your camera on a tripod, your phone on a tripod, film a shot and don't ever change anything in it. Don't touch the lighting, don't move anything. Have a blank slate at first with nobody in it and then add your character inside of it and have them do whatever you want them to do. For instance, dance, and then you can transition the two to add this teleport effect. So let's jump into it. So when you first open up your After Effects project, you're gonna have to drop in two different layers. One is gonna be your blank slate, which is this one of nobody in the frame on a tripod. And then your second shot will be the shot of your character or person in the frame. So in my case, it's smooth, so I'll be calling this smooth. Um, so I am gonna relabel my layers here. So this one is blank slate. That way I can tell them apart. Uh, it's okay to capitalize the L. And I'm going to rename this other one footage. So that way I know that my blank slate has nobody in it and then my footage has people in it or a person in it. So first step is going to be to grab your footage layer, control D to duplicate it. I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see it better. And the first frame you're actually going to just split it. So I'm going to edit split layer and delete the other half with the delete key. That way I only have one frame of that footage number two now, which is above. So what I'm going to do now is trace out Smooth's entire body. And instead of rotoscoping it, I'm going to go to tools up here and I'm going to click on the roto brush tool, which will speed up the process. So if I click on the little person and the brush, um, nothing will actually change. I actually have to double click on that one frame footage layer two. And now my cursor, as you can see, changes. Um, I might want to change the size of my brush. So if I go over here to the right side, I'm going to change my brush size over here. Let's go with nine so you can clearly see what I'm doing. And I'm going to trace Smooth's body here. It doesn't have to be perfect because the AI inside of After Effects is going to try to read what you are tracing and trace it to the best of its ability. But I am going to keep it inside of Smooth's body outline the whole time um, and just do a very basic trace because I can clean it up right after. Um, there's the hat and I'm going to close it off. Okay, so now you can see that smooth is traced except it's not exactly perfect so we want to smoothen that out a little bit. So back on that roto brush tool and I'm just going to hold down the left cursor on my mouse and I'm going to just fill in so the hat also gets traced. Um, as you can see, a little bit of the clock got grabbed in the roto. I can hold down alt and then hold down my left click on my mouse to erase the outside of the roto brush or the rotoscoped footage. So anything you want to remove from the roto, you can just trace it like this. Um, if I do want to fine tune it, I could change my brush size after I've clicked on the roto brush again. Maybe I want to go three so I can get in between his beard here. Hold down alt and subtract this area. Uh, that's good enough for me. And now I'm going to go down a little bit further. And you can see as even his fingertips get pulled out a little bit, roto brush, I'm actually going to green them. So hold down left mouse click and kind of trace this to the best of your ability. It's a little blurry, which is fine. I'm going to erase a little bit of this. Uh, that's good enough for me. And I'm going to continue doing this throughout the rest of this footage. As you can see, After Effects thinks the water fountain is part of his body. So I can remove that too, holding down alt and tracing the exterior of his body. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I'm pretty zoomed out. I'm going to go like this as I'm holding Alt and see if that fills it in. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for here. So I'm going to time lapse this part so you don't have to watch the whole thing. All right, so once you're done and you have an outline of your person here or your subject, whatever you're choosing, you want to go back to the last composition we were in. So instead of having this double clicked, I'm just going to go back over to the composition I was in editing from, and then I'm going to pre-compose that layer. Um, so right now you can't even see the outline difference, but if I right click this, pre-compose it, I can name this whatever I'd like. So I'm going to name this freeze because we are going to freeze this footage and do not click this one. Go ahead and click move all attributes into the new composition and have this uh, adjust composition duration box checked and then hit okay. So it's going to change colors. 
Um, and then what I want to do is actually freeze frame that exact spot where I am. I'm going to right click and uh, time, freeze frame, boom. So now it, it actually made a freeze frame of that footage. So I can actually move this around to wherever I'd like. I'll pull this up a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to go to the left three frames with it. So I'm going to expand it one, two, three, boom, there we go. And then I'm actually going to cut it off. Edit, split layer. I'm going to cut it off. So as soon as the other layer starts, that layer is gone. So you can see right here, there's even shadow in the background. And then the footage starts here. And then what I'm going to do is pre-compose this layer again. Pre-compose. And I'm going to name it Freeze Final. So this is the final freeze layer. I'm going to keep this checked and this checked here. So now that we have that, I'm going to make a duplicate layer of this exact freeze final. So I'm going to Control D when I have it selected. And it's going to make a duplicate of it. Um, and what I want to do is go over here and rename this to Display displacement map, but I'm just going to name it disp map for short. And I can go ahead and uncheck the eyeball so you can't see that top layer, the displacement map. I will turn off all the audio of all my layers so you don't hear this on playback. Um, so there we go. So this displacement map layer, I'm going to pre-comp this as well. I'm going to pre-compose again, displacement map um, final. And make sure this is checked again and this is checked again hit that again so now it's gonna be displacement map final so before I go into scaling I have to go and move the anchor point so as long as I have this tool pan behind anchor point selected I can move the anchor point which is this little circle here to where I want smooth to come from so I'll say I wanted him to warp from right here where his stomach is I can have it there if I did want him to warp from over here I'd leave it there and now we're gonna go into the scaling tool so I'm gonna go over to my blank slate and my footage combine Connect, I'm gonna click on the freeze final layer and I'm gonna click S to bring up the scale feature. Click the keyframe on scale, make sure it's at 100%. And I'm gonna go over three. One, two, three. And now I'm gonna change that scale to zero. So now, when I toggle through, he just expands like that. So if I go ahead and hit spacebar and play it back, it happens really fast, boom. Um, and it doesn't look that great right now, but what we wanna do is click on that freeze final layer again, make sure you have motion blur on, which is underneath these like three circles, motion blur, make sure this is checked um, right here. And you wanna make sure these are blue too, so motion blur is added to your entire project. But you can see now as he's moving, it's gonna add that blur to make it a little more realistic. Boom, boom, boom. So that's pretty much all we need to do with the freeze frame layer for now. So let's go to the, the displacement map layer. And what I'm gonna do is double click it. So it brings it up in another window, and as you can see, Everything else is black because we had originally traced him out, rotoscoped him. And what I will do now is go to Effects. So I actually have a panel over here, Effects and Presets. What you can also do is go to Effect up here once it loads. Um, as long as you have the layer selected, you can also go to Effects, Distort, and Turbulent Displace. I can also bring that up in my Effects Presets panel over here if I type in uh, Turbulent it would pop up here and I could drag and drop it, but let's just have one there. So once once you've added it to the layer, uh, you'll have this, um, you'll have all these settings in the effects controls. So if you are in this window, you can go to effects controls and it'll open this window up. And what you wanna do is you're gonna add turbulent displacement to this. So I can change the amount of my turbulent displacement. So say I wanted him to warp like this and then complexity, I could change it to a lot. So he's kind of like warped coming out of this weird warp wave here um, and then if i drag this nothing really happens it just he just looks funky so now i want to add a little bit of animation to this turbulent displacement all i have to do is hold down alt and click the stopwatch next to evolution and it will drop down over here for you to type in text um, so what i'm going to do is type in time and hold down shift eight which is what the little star is and I could time it, times it by, multiply it by, let's go with 1,000. You could do 500, you could do 2,000, depending how, how much movement you want to do. And then I would just click away, and it'll add evolution to it. So you can see now, as I drag through this, it's, it's, it's going crazy. It's, it's warping. So now, while I'm still in here, I want to change the opacity now so he kind of fades in. And what I'm going to do is go over maybe all the way to the end of my footage here, which is a few frames, and I'm going to change it to... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop down the effects window. I'm going to open up transform. I'm going to change opacity to 100%, 20, 
towards the end here, and I'm gonna go over a few frames and change this to 0%. So he's not there, and then he kind of fades in, which is perfect. And now I wanna go back to my original composition. I can go over to the tab that I was editing before, over here, and now we are here. And you can see that nothing has even changed since last time we did anything, because we need to add an adjustment layer. So we're gonna to go to layer at the top, new adjustment layer, and it's gonna drop it down there. And all we need to do is add a displacement map to that. So over here in the effects presets, I could type in displacement map and drag and drop that on. Another way to find that is effects distort and there should be a displacement map right here. So you could add that to the adjustment layer as well and still nothing has changed. But once I start moving around these features, uh, you'll see some changes. So let's let's uh, basically parent this with under the uh, under the drop down here to the displace, displacement map final, and it still hasn't done much. So let's go ahead and move the max horizontal displacement a little bit. You can see it's starting to get crazy, and I'm going to move it down a little too. You can play around with this to see you know what you're moving. So this was still trimmed out; it's moving too, but that's okay. So as I go here, play this back, you can see that there is some kind of weird pixel deformation here which is pretty nice and that's pretty much how I would make him just jump in so now on top of this I want to add some kind of warping effect so I'm gonna go ahead and layer new adjustment layer once again and it's gonna pop up up here and I am gonna set my adjustment layer to just be basically around the same edit split here around the same area of where he comes in and what we're going to do on this is add a ripple effect. So if we go to our effects presets, ripple, type that in, and you'll get the, under distort, you'll get ripple. And you can drag and drop that in here. So after you drag and drop your ripple effect onto your adjustment layer, you do want to up the radius of that ripple. And you can see the extreme if I really were to bring it up a lot, but you can see everything is warping around here. And maybe I want the center of the warp to be where smooth is coming in. So I'm going to move the center of the ripple. Um, just by holding down my left cursor and dragging this over to the middle of him here. So everything around him should start warping. And if I go ahead and play this back, you can see briefly a little bit of warp. So right here, you can see it's kind of bending. Um, I might want to change this so I can actually add warp speed here. So it goes faster. I could add uh, width, height, uh, ripple phase, just a lot of different things. Control Z that. Uh, I am going to change the height a little bit. But let's see, if I play this back now, it should start warping right before he gets in and then go away afterwards. So playing it, so it starts warping and he comes in, warp, it's like warp. Uh, that seems a little bit early to me, so I'm going to change my adjustment layer, maybe two frames. So it just starts warping right before he gets in, there we go, so warp. And then maybe by this point, it's gone. So basically you can set your in and outs for your adjustment layer. Um, and it looks kind of funky right now, which is fine. But we're going to add a cloud on top of that. So if you go to your project, one way you're, you're going to need to do this is by downloading a shockwave effect. And I'll add this to my freebies folder linked in my description, um, where you could just download it for free. But there are a bunch of different sites where you can download shockwaves and different clouds and poofs. But I'm just going to drag and drop that in here. And what this looks like is just a white cloud. Um, right now and what I could do is right click it and go to blending mode oh wait blending mode here and change this to subtract so it's gonna pull out and do the opposite color so now I have a black cloud in here and I can actually move the cloud around maybe I want the cloud to be right where smooth comes in uh, but if I play this back now it comes in really slow and it goes away very slowly so maybe I want to speed this up right click it time stretch and I want to change this maybe to, let's do like 33% of that, see what that looks like. So now it's going to happen faster. So that's a little better already. It's looking pretty good. But maybe I want to time it up perfectly. So I'm going to maybe have him where the cloud starts, right where the warp starts, and then he comes through the cloud. Right there, space bar, play that back. So there is smooth coming through. Um, and it looks like he just kind of appears. So I do want to expand my cloud. So if I want to move around my cloud, maybe I can make it bigger. I could do the drop down window next to the shockwave 
transform here, scale it up a little more. And maybe I want to rotate it so his body is like totally in it right here. And I could reposition it as well um, here. So let's see what that looks like now when he comes through the cloud. So that's like a bigger poof. So his whole body gets through it. And to me, it kind of just like comes in pretty quick and the cloud doesn't look really real. So what I could do is right when he comes in, I could make the cloud start slowing down. So I could right click um, on my shockwave layer here, edit split layer, and I'm gonna time stretch that as well. So now I'm gonna slow that back part down so it doesn't fade out so fast. So now if I play that back, you can see it kind of just floats there. And that's pretty much it. If you want to fine tune different things here to make it seem a little more smooth, you can. So that's pretty much how you do a warped turbo effect. If you want to get crazy with it, you can add some camera shake as soon as your character comes in. So the power of this portal is actually uh, shaking the camera because a shockwave would hit it. But that you might have to download a plugin or find a free version on YouTube that you can download camera shake or you can actually just position it yourself, but we won't get into that on this one. Thanks for watching my video, everyone. If you do have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. You can actually subscribe too if you wanna see more tutorials, and uh, good luck.